Behind me is the scene of an inferno fueled by pure evil, marked by voicemails and 911 calls that stunned us all. The first from a father on a murderous rampage saying goodbye, the other from a frantic caseworker screaming for help. Tonight, we've got the story you haven't heard yet. The last few explosive moments from the only survivor and what went wrong from the very beginning with Josh and Susan Powell. This story goes all the way back to the sins of Josh Powell's own father and ends with two innocent little boys who loved bugs, frogs, and matchbox cars. I did everything I was supposed to do. I did everything right and the boys are still dead. Last Sunday's Inferno has been sweeping across American televisions all week. There was only one survivor. She hasn't been heard from until now. It was unreal to me that Josh Powell had murdered his children and he had murdered his children while they were in my care. Elizabeth Griffin Hall is the Washington State caseworker who escorted seven-year-old Charlie and five-year-old Braden to a visitation with their dad, Josh Powell. I was like a grandma to the boys. What is the hardest thing for you to deal with emotionally when you think about losing your boys? That they won't grow up, that they didn't see the sun the next day. We'll have more of Elizabeth's exclusive inside look at the still evolving drama that seems in these scenes like hell on earth. But it's a story that begins with a couple who seemed heaven bound. Susan Cox and Joshua Powell, both Mormons and Puyallup, Washington natives, they met at a church function. Susan's parents remember things moving quickly. How old was she when she decided she had met the man she wanted to marry? Oh boy, well, 19. <laughs> 19, yeah. She was young. Yeah, young. And she just felt like a princess. Susan and Josh were married in April of 2001. The two clans were destined for a strange and explosive relationship. No one saw this coming in the young couple's early bliss. Certainly not Susan's sister, Denise. At the very beginning, you saw a perfect couple, very happy couple. Virtually everyone who met Susan speaks of her warmth and openness, qualities that impressed their new neighbors when the Powells moved from Washington to West Valley City, Utah. She was always worrying about other people, where Josh was kind of the exact opposite. He was only ever concerned about himself. He gave me the creeps. Darlene Allen, a friend since childhood, says Susan confided everything to her. What do you know to be the truth of this marriage? Abusive. Very abusive. He owned her. He pretty much told her what to do when she did it. Did she think about leaving? Oh, yeah. Come here, Charlie. Here we go, Charlie. But friends say Josh used a powerful weapon to keep Susan in the increasingly volatile marriage. Their sons. Charlie and younger brother Braden. When I told her to leave with the kids, she told me that he had told her, over my dead body, will you have those boys? They're mine. Again, the boys were a possession to him. They were just possession. Fathers and sons is one theme with deep, dark echoes in this story. It's now just come to light that Josh himself may have suffered at the hands of his father, Stephen. Documents obtained by 2020 from Steve Powell's 1992 divorce from his wife, Terica paint a disturbing picture of Josh as a severely troubled teenager under the thumb of an abusive father. Terica Powell wrote that Josh was exposed to pornography by his father at a young age. He once tried to commit suicide. And most shockingly, he threatened his mother with a butcher's knife after she asked him to do the dishes. If Susan knew about any of this, she never mentioned it to Denise or Darlene, even as Josh's behavior grew ever more cruel. He would withdraw affection from Susan, so much so that she knew the exact date of conception for Brayden because it hardly ever happened. In a marriage headed toward meltdown, add another classic marital pressure, financial troubles. In April of 2007, Josh, who worked in real estate and website design, declared bankruptcy. But he was trying to come out of it, he said, and he was putting his family first. People who know me know that I'm a good dad. I work hard, I put my sons first. December 6, 2009. On that fateful Sunday night, Josh and his sons disappeared for almost 24 hours. Susan Powell disappeared for what may be forever. 
On Monday morning, December 7th, when Susan didn't drop the boys off as usual, a concerned babysitter called Josh's sister, Jennifer Graves. We tried to knock on the door, and um, when we couldn't get anybody, we called the police. Jennifer is among the first inside the house that morning. She says Susan's phone and purse were left behind. I knew she wasn't going to walk away without that. And there's something strange about the living room rug. There were two great big box fans pointed right at the carpet in the living room. And it looked like somebody had washed the carpet. Late that Monday, Josh turns up with the children. He tells everyone when his wife disappeared, he and their sons, ages two and four, were out camping. What time did you go camping? Um, I, you know, I, I got out to a pretty late start. Nine-ish, something like that? No, it was, it was later. Adding to the suspicion, Josh Powell doesn't get around to calling Susan's parents, Chuck and Judy Cox, until two days later. Did he offer any explanation of where she might have gone? No. Hey, we no. were having trouble. Hey, she may have left me. No, you know. no nothing like that. He just said, I, I don't know where she is. No idea? Where, she, where would you start looking? No, I don't know. I don't know where to go. Tonight on Nightline, without a trace. We also have new details in the case of that missing mom. The missing Utah mother becomes national news. Everyone wants an answer. Why take your two young sons camping after midnight, freezing cold temperatures? Well, we just go out and do things that are fun. Police named Josh Powell as the only person of interest, but they stop short of calling him a suspect. Then he disappears himself. He packs up the kids in the house and leaves. How do you take that? He knows she's not coming back. She's missing and he moves a month after? That's ridiculous. Nobody does that. It suddenly hit me. Josh has done something to her. Powell and his sons turn up in his hometown near Seattle, living with his father. Josh is through talking to cops, but not the press. Did you kill your wife? No. Did you have anything to do with the disappearance of your wife? No. The investigation may be stalled, but there are other developments. At summer camp in 2010, the younger boy, Braden, sketches an innocent drawing with dark implications. And he drew a minivan with three people in it. There's Daddy, and there's Charlie, and there's me. He says, oh, that's nice. Mommy's not there. Mommy's in the trunk, you know. And then he said, well, you know, we went camping and we stopped somewhere and mommy and daddy got out and mommy didn't come back. Still, cops say there's not enough to make an arrest. Increasingly frustrated, police allegedly turn up the heat on Josh. Cox family lawyer Steve Downing says Susan's family was encouraged to pass out flyers in a shopping center right in the Powell's neighborhood. <laughs> And a massive and very public search in a desolate mining area is seen now as a way to provoke the prime suspect. It worked on Josh. It didn't make him come out and acknowledge anything or confess, but it certainly wound him up, right? I think it did. West Valley City Police will neither confirm nor deny this account. But if the cops were playing mind games, the Powells had launched a strategy of their own, attacking of all people, Susan. I don't really think she's dead. Never. I mean, I haven't since that time. I really haven't felt that way. In this stunning interview with ABC's Abby Boudreau, Josh Powell speculates his wife may have led a double life, that an illicit affair, not foul play, was at the bottom of her abrupt departure. Has she ever been unfaithful to you? Never that I know of. Then why do you think that she would just run off with another man? She's a very sexual person. Powell and his father go so far as to implicate this man, 30-year-old Stephen Kutcher, who coincidentally disappeared just days after Susan. Although, Kutcher was last seen near Las Vegas, 400 miles away from West Valley City. Was there any chance that was true in your mind? No, I actually wanted to vomit. It made me sick. Ridiculous. <laughs> just ridiculous. Both of the police departments looked into said there's absolutely nothing there.